This is one of the most shameful cases ever to come before this bench. In all my years as a magistrate, I have seldom heard a tale of such heinous iniquity. Ah, be quiet! This parasite can think of no better way to end an evening's hooliganism on the night of the university boat race. Can our seats of learning produce barbarians so lost to decency that their highest ambition is to steal a hard-working police constable's helmet and make off with it? I find you guilty as charged. Bertram, Wilberforce, Worcester. And have no alternative but to fine you the sum of five pounds. No buts, Worcester. Uh, uh, oh. No ifs. Take him away. Uh, away, I say! We're here, Gav. Free Bob. I was sent by the agency, sir. I was given to understand that you required a valet. Very good, sir. Night last night, sir.
you would drink this, sir. It's a little preparation of my own invention. Gentlemen have told me they find it extremely invigorating after a late evening. Thank you, sir. My name is Jeeves. I say, Jeeves, what an extraordinary talent. Thank you, sir. Uh, could one inquire... But... I'm sorry, sir. No, no, of course not. I'm not at liberty to divulge the ingredients, sir. No, 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 of course. Secrets of the Guild and all that. Precisely, sir. Hmm. Hmm. Ha! Well, uh, I, I say, I, I say hello. Hello. I want to get in. You'll have to come this way, I'm afraid. We can't shift him. Oh. I was hoping to have a snifter before lunch. Sound idea. Anyone in the bar? Barmy Fungy Phipps. Is he? Uffy Simpson and Freddie Chalk Marshall. Really? The Worcester twins, of course. What, Eustace and Claude? You know them? Well, they're my cousins. You must be Bertie Worcester. I am. I'm Rainsby. How do you do? You'd better come in. <laughs> well, novel, that. It's not right, Mr Worcester. I'm the one the committee's going to blame for this, you know. They can't abide mooses, the committee can't. Oh, I think it adds a certain what's it? Come on, Rogers, do give me a hand. Oh. Here we go. Hello, Bertie. Snort, if you've got a pen, play it when you blast it. Bertie! Cousin Bertie! Did you meet young dog face when you're in? Uh, I met someone called Rainsby in the hall with a moose. Elk. Sorry. It's a common enough mistake. It was a mistake, pinching it. Where did you see it from? Oh, I don't know, some big museum place? In Kensington. I don't think I've ever been to Kensington. Hello, Barney. Yes, you have. Your mother lives there. Oh, that Kensington. So what do you want it for? It's for the Seekers. And what are the Seekers? It's a club in Oxford. Eustace and I are rather keen to get in. Rainsby, too. But you have to pinch something to get elected. Now, touching that lunch, you very decently were going to volunteer to stand us. Uh, can't be done, I'm afraid. I've got to have lunch with our Aunt Agatha. No. Not the nephew crusher. Bertie. Aunt Agatha. It is young men like you who make a person with the future of the race at heart despair. Oh, right. Cursed with too much money, you do nothing but waste your time on frivolous pleasures. You are simply an antisocial animal. A drone. Bertie, you must marry him. <laughs> oh, I say, really? <laughs> Aunt Agatha. Will you be quiet? <whistles> there, Macintosh. You want someone strong, self reliant, and sensible. No, I don't. To counteract the deficiencies of your own character. And by great good fortune, I have found the very girl. Oh? Who is it? Sir Roderick Glossop's daughter, Honoria. No! Don't be silly, Bertie. <coughs> Sit down and eat your luncheon. <coughs> oh, she is just the wife for you. Oh, really, look here. She will mould you. Well, I don't want to be moulded. I'm not a jelly. And that is a matter of opinion. Lady Glossop has very kindly invited you to Ditteridge Hall for a few days. I told her you would be delighted to come down this afternoon. Oh, what a pity. I'm so sorry. I, I've got a dashed important engagement this afternoon. Nonsense. You will go to Ditteridge Hall this afternoon. Right.
Jeeves. We shall be going down to Ditteridge this afternoon. Can you manage that? Certainly, sir. Will we be travelling by train, sir? By train, yes. People by the name of Glossop. Would that be Sir Roderick Glossop, the noted nerve specialist, sir? That's the one. Very good, sir. Um, which suit would you wear, sir? Oh, uh, this one, I should think. Very good, sir. Would you like this suit, Jeeves? Oh, yes, sir. Huh. <clears throat> what don't you like about this suit, Jeeves? It's a very nice suit, sir. Well, what's wrong with it? Come on, out with it. <clears throat> well, sir, if I might make the suggestion, if we are to travel by train, perhaps a simple brown Harris tweed such as this might be more appropriate. Oh, that's absolute rot, Jeeves. <laughs> Very good, sir. Perfectly blithering, my dear man. <laughs> Just as you say, sir. Yeah, all right, then. Yes, sir. Jeeves, I have to make one thing crystal clear. Yes, sir? I am not one of those fellows who become absolute slaves to their valets. No, sir. Well, well just as long as we understand each other. Perfectly, sir. Bingo Little? Me? Yes. That's not Bertie Worcester. It is. I haven't seen you for ages, Bingo. Oh, I've been living in the country. Really? Whereabouts in the country? Well, here, as a matter of fact. But why? You hate the country. Yes, I know. I got a job tutoring the Glossop Kid. Well, what do you want to tutor the Glossop Kid for? Money, Bertie, moolah, oof, spondulic. Oh, well, yes. <sighs> well, yes, the only one of the family I know is the girl, Honoria. Oh, Bertie. What? I worship her, Bertie. I worship the very ground she treads on, a tender goddess. Big girl, sporty. Strong and upright and wonderful. Well, yes, it's a matter of... Wait a minute. Have you told her? Not yet. I haven't got the nerve. But we walk together in the gardens most evenings and it sometimes seems to me there's a look in her eye. Yes, I know that look. Like a sergeant major. <laughs> Is that the kid? Yes. He's fishing. I'll introduce you, if you like. This is Oswald. Bertie Worcester. Well, well, Oswald. How are you? All right. Nice place, this. It's all right. Like fishing, do you? It's all right. Why don't you shove him in? In the water. Wake him up a bit. She'd never forgive me. She's devoted to the little brute. Great Scott! I've got it! Listen, Bingo, Honoria's away, isn't she? She's coming back tomorrow. She's coming, my love, my own. Y yes, fine, absolutely. But you still want to make a hit with her, don't you, Bingo? Yes. Bless you, my child. You can do it. How, Bertie, how? It's very simple. <laughs> 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 It's all in the wrist action, you see. You've, you've got to get the flip forward first to disengage with the chin strap. That's where balmy Fungi Phipps went wrong on New Year's Eve. Is that a person? A balmy? Mm, well, there's some dispute about that. <laughs> but you see, what he did was to pull straight back on the helmet and uh, the policeman came with it. Oh, but he must have been hurt. Balmy? No, just a couple of bruises. I think my wife was referring to the policeman. No, 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 not a bit of it, no. They enjoy it, like foxes. Foxes? How they enjoy being hunted. Oh, yes. <laughs> but, but foxes are vermin, Mr Worcester. Nasty, cunning creatures, like cats. Lady Glossop and I dislike cats. We hate them. Nasty, cruel beasts. Now, let me try to understand this, Mr Worcester. 
policemen, you say, enjoy having their helmets stolen? Well, uh, yes. Yes, I think they, they try and enter into the spirit of the thing, don't you think, Bigger? Oh, yes. 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 But what is the point of it? Point? Uh, well, it's, um... It's tradition, really. It's, it's part of the rich tapestry of our island story. It's, um... Completely stupid. You mustn't be rude, Oswald. Uh, no, 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 that's all right. That's all right. He's young. He'll learn. What sort of a day is it, Jeeves? Extremely clement, sir, with the promise of further fine weather to come. Excellent. Just the sort of day for pushing cheeky young blighters off bridges, I should think. I couldn't say, sir. Shall I lay out our grey flannel trousers and the checked sports coat for this morning, sir? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I expect you're wondering what I meant by that last remark, eh, Jeeves? I should be most interested to know, sir. Yeah, well, right. Well, I've had rather a stunning idea, Jeeves. Indeed, sir. You see... My friend Bingo Little is, well, more than a little smitten with the daughter of the house. Miss Honoria Glossop, sir? As you say, Jeeves, Miss Honoria Glossop. How do you know about Honoria Glossop? <clears throat> there was some discussion in the servants' hall last evening, sir. I'm given to understand she is a healthy young lady, sir. Yes, well, that's, um, hmm, that's a very good way of putting it, Jeeves. Thank you, sir. And uh, Mr Little is enamoured of her, sir. Indeed he is. The trouble is, the poor sap can't bring himself to pop the question. A common enough predicament, sir. Well, possibly, Jeeves, possibly. Anyway, your employer, fired, I must confess, by the fact that my Aunt Agatha has me earmarked for Honoria, unless I can lay her off onto someone else, has come up with a novel and foolproof solution to the problem. This is very gratifying news, sir. Yes, well, we thought so, Bingo and I, yes. What it is, is this. Miss Glossop's young brother, Oswald, is by way of being the apple of his sister's eye. Human nature is very mysterious, sir. Uh... Yeah, well, my thoughts precisely, Jeeves. Anyway, my plan is to lure Honoria to the vicinity of the bridge and then surreptitiously push the little blighter into the lake. Mr Little will thereupon hop out from behind the bulrushes where he's been waiting, rescue Oswald and have professions of undying love showered upon him by a grateful sister. <clears throat> What's the matter, Jeeves? I couldn't advise it, sir. Uh... Couldn't advise it? What do you mean you couldn't advise it? It's just my opinion, sir. But uh, your plan has too many imponderables. No, no, only Oswald's going to be imponderable. <laughs> Imponderable. Thank you, sir. Yes. <clears throat> but if I might say so, sir, any undertaking that requires the presence of four people in one place at the same time, while two of them are unaware of the fact, it's fraught with the possibility of mishap, sir. Oh, balderdash, Jeeves. Not to say flat doodle. Very good, sir. No, I'm sorry, Jeeves, but when you've been a little longer in my employ, you will come to understand that all my chums rely heavily on your employer's wisdom and knowledge of human nature in the conduct of their affairs. Just as you say, sir. Not to mention my organisational powers and just plain thingness. Will that be all, sir? Yes, that'll be all, thank you. Just, um... No, that'll be all. Thank you, Jeeves. Very good, sir. Mr. Worcester. Oh, good morning, Lady Blossom. Do sit down. Oh. <laughs> I uh, was looking for Oswald. Oswald? Uh, yes, but he's probably getting ready to go fishing, I should think. At least I hope so. <laughs> oh, you hope so? Uh, yes, well, you know, fishing is a good, healthy pursuit for a young lad. Uh. Character building, too, battling against the mighty forces of Mother Nature. <laughs> yes, Ophie Prosser once asked Boko Fiddleworth down to his place for some fly fishing. Poor old Boko couldn't fathom why anyone would want to catch flies. <laughs> Uh, still, that's Boko for you. Uh, do you always breakfast at this hour, Mr Worcester? Oh, good Lord, no. No, no, no. Only if I get up early. 
Sir Roderick was on his way to London at eight o'clock. Really? He had an urgent call from the Bishop of Hackney. Ah, the old bish got a few pages stuck together, did he? <laughs> My husband is not in the book trade, Mr. Worcester. He is a well-known nerve specialist. Yes, that's what I say. Yes, and dashed interesting work it must be, too. Do you work, Mr. Worcester? But work as in honest toil, you mean? Yes. Hewing the wood and drawing the old wet stuff and so forth. Quite. Well, I've known a few people who worked. I uh, absolutely swear by it, some of them. But... Boko Fittleworth almost had a job once. Who is this Boko Fittleworth you keep talking about? Well, Boko? You don't know Boko? No. Good Lord, I thought everybody knew Boko. I do not. Looks like a parrot with the molt. No. Once put his shirt on Silly Billy to win the Cesarewitch and Lady of Spain beat him by a nose. I have never met Boko Fittleworth. No, well, I couldn't recommend it wholeheartedly anyway. He's an acquired taste, Boko. At least that's what his mother says. <laughs> you were telling me how he once got a job. Oh, yes. Well, um, Boko's got an uncle in the city, you see. He broke stocks or something like that. And he offered Boko this job, and Boko accepted it. I don't think either of them could have been firing on all cylinders, to be honest, at the time. Anyway, uh, chaos obviously ensued until Boko saw sense and gave it all up. Then we had to take it in turns to go around and sit with him until he'd calmed down. How would you ever support a wife, Mr. Worcester? Well, it depends on whose wife it was. I was said a, a gentle pressure beneath the left elbow when crossing a busy street normally fills the bill. <laughs> She telephoned. She phoned you, eh? Well, that's good, isn't it? Shows a friendly spirit. Well, she didn't phone me exactly. I mean, I picked the phone up because I was standing beside it. What did she say? She said, let me talk to someone with a brain. Ah, oh, but it was friendly, the way she said it. <laughs> Ow! Go and start your Latin. Did she say what time she'd be back? In about an hour, she said. And when was that? About an hour ago. She's bringing a friend, Daphne Braithwaite or something, her name is. Mm. Very well, then. Twelve o'clock. What? Twelve o'clock, the bridge, Oswald. Oh, right, yes. We're still on for that, then, are we? Well, absolutely. You still want to bring Honoria to her knees, don't you? Oh, Bertie, she's such a wonderful person. She has... Y yes, been... fine. So, twelve o'clock, you be hidden in the bulrushes by the bridge. Oh, Bertie, do you really think I'll she's... I'll see you later. Yeah. Oh, leave the bags. Birkett will get them. <gasps> Birkett! Inside. I want to show you some of the things I shot last week. Hello, Honoria. Oh, it's that Bertie Worcester. What's he doing here? What are you doing here, Bertie? Oh, you know, this and that, hither and yon. This is my friend, Daphne Braithwaite. How do you do? <laughs> Bertie's a wastrel. Oh, goody. At least that's what his Aunt Agatha says. Come on, Daphne. See you later, Bertie. Oh, will I? Yes. Yes, uh, see you later, Daphne. Oh, I say, um, Honoria. What? Um, will you come for a walk with me? What? You know, a walk. <laughs> Birkett, the bags. What for? Ah, uh, I want to tell you something. Really? Now? Uh, no, no, uh, in about half an hour. Right. No, 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 that's when, uh, that's when. That's when? Uh, in about 20 minutes by the bridge. Why in 20 minutes? It'll be better then. <laughs> Hello, Mummy. I'm back. Mwah. Did you have a nice time at the Braithwaite Stair? Lovely, yes. I brought Daphne back with me. Close the door a moment, Honoria. Come and sit down. I have been
been talking to Mr. Worcester? Yes, I saw him. What's he doing here? Mrs. Gregson sent him. What on earth for? He doesn't shoot. He doesn't hunt. It is your birthday next week, Honoria. I hope she didn't send him down as a present. <laughs> you will be 24. Oh, no. It is a good family, Honoria. Oh, honestly, Mummy, he doesn't work, even. He told me this morning he has been thinking about work. He is not all your father and I would have hoped for for you, I agree, but... Surely you could make something of him. Is he keen at all? Oh, I'm sure he is. <laughs> you know how these young men try to hide their feelings. <laughs> Still, you ass, she'll see you. <coughs> Don't sniff. Right, here she comes. Ah. <laughs> well? Yes, uh, I was just thinking. What? Yes, this may sound a bit rummy on all that, but there is someone here who is frightfully in love with you and, uh, and so forth. Uh, a friend of mine, as a matter of fact. Well, why doesn't he say so? Oof, simply hasn't got the nerve. Uh, worships the ground you tread on and all that, but just can't whack up the ginger to tell you. This is very interesting. Is it? Hmm. Yeah, well, anyway, that's the position. Um, so, just bear it in mind, eh? Oh, Bertie, how funny you are. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't make all that row. You're scaring the fish away. Oswald, you shouldn't sit on the bridge like that. He might easily fall in. Might he? Oh, well, I'll, um, I'll go and tell him. <laughs> Hello. Fishing, eh? Here, watch out. Ah! Oh, 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 help! Help him! Help! What are you doing? Help! <laughs> Him. No, no, now no. Now you run straight up into the house and change your wet clothes before you catch your death of cold. No, no. Go I... on. Oh, Bertie. Bertie. Just the man I wanted to see. Bertie, a wonderful thing has happened. Blighter, what became of you? Do you realise they're all wet? Bertie, I was just on my way to hide in those rushes when the most extraordinary thing happened. Walking across the lawn, I saw the most radiant, the most beautiful girl in the world. We started to talk. Her name was Daphne Braithwaite, Bertie. Our eyes met, and I knew at once that what I imagined to be my love for Honoria Glossop was a mere passing whim. Daphne is so wonderful, Bertie, like a tender goddess. But she's so sympathetic, Bertie. Daphne! And her handicapped only six. How these things turn out, don't you think, Jeeves? Indeed, sir. Mm, before we get Bingo under starter's orders, even. There he is, falling in love with this blessed six handicapper. Still, I suppose at least it means he's been saved from the frightful Honoria. True, sir, but if I might say so, sir. 
at a cost to yourself which might have caused other lesser men to blench. Oh, come, jeez. Slight dousing is no more than a chap might do for any chap under the sex. <clears throat> it was not the dousing to which I was referring, sir, but to the engagement. Engagement? <clears throat> I was downstairs a few moments ago, sir, and could not help but overhear Miss Glossop announcing your engagement to her. Is it getting chilly in here, Jeeves? No, sir. Oh. Must be my imagination. <laughs> Betty was so sweet, Mrs. Gregson, and so funny. I find it difficult to envisage. I shall be able to make something of him, I'm sure. Well, he has led a completely wasted life up to the present. Mm. I say. Well, be quiet, Bertie. But there's a lot of good in him. Uh, no, there isn't, actually. He simply wants bringing out. It's time I took you in hand, Bertie Wertie. You want someone to look after you. Uh, no, I don't. Really, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Bye-bye, <laughs> Bertie. Goodbye, Mrs. Gregson. Goodbye. Bertie. Yes, Aunt Agatha. <clears throat> Dear Honoria doesn't know it, but a little difficulty has arisen about your marriage. By Jove, really? Oh, it's nothing at all, of course. It's only a little exasperating. No, the fact is the gossips are being a little troublesome. Sir Roderick particularly so. Ah, thinks I'm not a good bet, eh? Wants to scratch the fixture. Well, it's a shame that perhaps he's right. Pray there. don't be so absurd, Bertie. It's nothing as serious as that. But a nerve specialist with his extensive practice can hardly help taking a rather warped view of humanity. You mean he thinks I've got fewer marbles than advertised? Oh, no, no, no. Well, he uh, just wants to satisfy himself that you are completely normal. Well, I've all the blessed nerve. I mean, I'm, I'm not a chap to take offence. But... So I have said that you will give them dinner this evening. Well, if he thinks I'm a raving loony. No, don't be silly, but. Uh... And remember, the Glossops drink no wine. Yes, Aunt Agatha, I remember. And remember, Sir Roderick can eat only the simplest of foods owing to an impaired digestion. Yes, well, I should think a dog biscuit and a glass of water would about meet the case. Bertie, that is precisely the sort of idiotic remark that would be calculated to arouse Sir Roderick's strongest suspicions. He is a very serious-minded man. <laughs> has been it. Well done, Claude. You're not Bertie. He's better looking than Bertie. It's very kind of you to say so, sir. We're his cousins. I'm Claude Worcester. I'm Eustace Worcester. I'm not his cousin. I'm Rainsby. I'm delighted to meet you, Lord Rainsby. Won't you come in, please? What's your name? Jeeves, sir. Uh, I'm Mr. Worcester's new valet. The last one used to pinch his socks. <clears throat> Mr. Worcester is not in at the moment, sir, but I'm sure he would like me to offer you some refreshment. That's jolly decent of him, Jeeves. He has some Bollinger 27, which is particularly fine. <laughs> It'd be a shame to let it go off. <laughs> Jeeves? Yes, sir? We've got some things down in the taxi which we want to take back to Oxford tonight. But the last train's not till 10.10. Ten. Say, were we invited to dinner? I regret not, sir. Anyway, we were going to ask Cousin Bertie if we could leave some things here until the train. I'm sorry, sir. I should have to ask Mr Worcester's permission first. What manner of things might they be, sir? A top hat. A fish. And a couple of cats, of course. Cats, sir. Perhaps Mr. Worcester would not object. Oh, oh thank you, dumb Jeeves. Dogface, go and get the stuff and bring it up. Right. Where is Bertie, anyway? He had an important meeting with Mr. Fungi Phipps, sir. Poor me, Fungi Phipps. I believe that is the subriquet, sir, yes. Has the IQ of a backward clam? It's my understanding that amongst fellow members of the Drones Club, he is considered something of a dangerous intellectual, sir. That's the one. Mr. Worcester informed me that he is attending the weekly meeting of the Drones Club Fine Arts Committee. No. 
seven, four. What's a king count has? Ten. What's a ten count has then? Ten. Tens and all picture cards count as ten. How long have you been playing this game, Barney? About an hour and a quarter. Anyhow, that's a leaner. Leaners only count half. Oh, oh good oh, shot, Bertie. Well, oh, my game, I think. You've not scored a hundred yet, have you? Five hundred? Oh, well, I thought we were playing to a hundred. Let's have another drink at the bar. Uh, can't be done, I'm afraid, Boko. We've got people coming to dinner. Toodle pip. Oh, Bye. Uh, what do sevens count as? <laughs> had a hog as big as a whale. Hoody, 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 I mean, all this hoody hoody ho stuff is pretty clear, but what do you suppose a hoochie coochie is exactly? It's difficult to say, sir, unless it's in connection with one of the demotic American words for ardent spirits. I'm thinking of hooch, a word of Eskimo origin, I'm informed. Tch, you bally well are informed, Jeeves. Do you know everything? I really don't know, sir. Hmm. Um, hmm. She had a dream about the King of Sweden. He gave her things that she was needing. Now, you see, now that is clever, Jeeves. Really, is it? That line about the King of Sweden and things she was needing. Yes, His Majesty King Gustav does seem to have been extraordinarily generous to the young lady, sir. No, 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 no. I meant, um, I meant the fact that it rhymes, you see. Sweden, needing. Almost, sir. Hmm. He gave her a home built of gold and steel, a platinum car with diamond studded wheels. Who do you? I say, Jeeves, could, could you lend a hand here, do you think? Very good, sir. It's just that it's a bit difficult, you know, being just the one of me. It's a sort of call and response thing. I sing ho de ho de ho and you have to go ho de ho de ho back Do you understand? I think so, sir. Right, let's try it. Um, ho de ho de ho de ho ho de ho de ho sir. ra da ra da ra ra de ra de ra sir. tee de he de he tee de he de he, sir. Yes, um, I don't mean to be overly critical, Jeeves. Um, I mean, I know you're doing your best. Thank you, sir. I just think that perhaps we could dispense with the sir at the end of every line. And, it, you know, it shows the proper feudal spirit and all that, but I'm afraid it does play merry hell with the rhythm of the thing. Very good, sir. All right. <clears throat> hoody, hoody, ho. Hoody, hoody, ho. Tee dee hee dee Tee dee hee dee hee But many had a heart and Oh, Jeeves, do you think I ought to sing Minnie the Moocher to the Glossops this evening? I shouldn't think it advisable, sir. I've not heard that Sir Roderick is musical. Ah, oh, no, but Lady Glossop is. There is also that to be considered, sir. Well, now, what are you giving us for dinner tonight? Consomme, sir, a cutlet and a savoury, and some lemon squash, iced. Well, I don't see how that can harm them. Just don't get carried away with the excitement of the thing and start bringing in coffee. Very good, sir. Right. Stand by, Jeeves. Ha, thinks I'm balmy, does he? We'll show him, eh, Jeeves? Indubitably, sir. Just don't let your eyes go glassy or you'll find yourself in a padded cell before you know where you are. What-ho, what-ho, what-ho! Good evening, Mr. Worcester. Good evening, Jeeves. Good evening, Lady Glossop. Uh, we're a little late, I'm afraid. Sir Roderick was detained at the Duke of Ramfermlin's. Robert Fumlin? Yes, he, um, he's off his rocker, isn't he? There's nothing seriously wrong with his grace. It's merely unfortunate that his footman failed to give him his sugar this morning. Sugar? He likes a lump of sugar, first thing. His grace is under the impression that he is a canary. Oh, well, mistake anyone might make. 
And as he didn't get his sugar, he flew into a temper and tried to perch on the picture rail. Well, it's not unreasonable. I rather feel like doing that in the mornings when I don't get my tea. <laughs> uh, right, so should we go for it in, then? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Uh, now, if I sit in the middle, uh, Lady Glossop, would you like to sit on my right? And Sir Roderick on my left? Uh, uh, is that right? No, wait a minute. No, perhaps Lady Glossop ought to sit in the middle. Um, oh, she's the only lady. Um, then we can sit either side. Should we try that? Yes, Lady Glossop in the middle. Uh, yes, I, if you'd like to go on the other side, Sir Roderick, and I'll sit here. No, wait a minute, that's not right, is it? No, Sir Roderick ought to sit in the middle. Oh, well, he's the only knight. <laughs> Distinguished gent and all that. Yes, Sir Roderick in the middle. No, it's all right. We're getting there. We're getting there. Sir Roderick here. Uh, yes, if I can just squeeze past. <laughs> uh, no, hold on, hold on. Can't have husband and wife sitting together. Uh, no, that's right. I'll sit in the middle. Uh, yes, and Sir Roderick on that side and Lady Glossop on this side, if you wouldn't mind. There we go. <laughs> hold on, we're back where we started now. Uh, Mr Worcester. Hello? Let us sit down. Oh, right, yes. Good idea, yes. <clears throat> Phew, I'm worn out. <laughs> uh, lemon squash, anyone? No, thank you. No, Sir Roderick? Thank you. I say, Jeeves, that soup doesn't look at all bad, does it? Thank you, sir. So, Sir Roderick, this Ram Fermlin fellow, does he get dressed up in yellow feathers and all that? Well, I mean, I know I would if I thought I was a canary. <laughs> Pretty Polly! <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm jolly interested in people who get the Jim Jams because, well, some of my best friends do Hush. serve you. Do you keep a cat, Mr. Worcester? A cat? No. I had a distinct impression I heard a cat mewing, either in this room or very close at hand. No, no, well, it's probably a taxi or something in the street. A taxi, Mr. Worcester? Yes, well, taxis squawk a bit, don't they? Squawk? Yes, rather like cats, in a way. Lady Glossop and I have a particular horror of cats. Oh, well, there you go, then. I don't much like taxis. <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband had an unfortunate experience with a taxi only this afternoon. Indeed, I did. I was about to be driven to the Duke of Ramfernley's house. In or cage, as I expect he likes to call it. <laughs> anyway, I was sitting innocently in my car when my hat was snatched from my head. Now, as I looked back, I perceived it being waved in a kind of feverish triumph from the interior of a taxi cab. Huh. What an extraordinary thing. Must have been some sort of practical joke, I suppose. I confess I failed to detect anything akin to comedy in the outrage. The action was without question that of a mentally unbalanced subject. <laughs> Mr. Worcester, what is the meaning of this? Eh? There is a cat close at hand. It is not in the street. Look, I have not got a cat, I tell you. All right, I'll get Jeeves in here. There. I can't bear it. I simply can't bear it. No, look, it must be Jeeves. Jeeves? You called, sir? Uh, uh, were, were you making a noise like a cat? No, sir. Will that be all, sir? No, it will jolly well not be all, Jeeves. Are there any cats in the flat? Only the three in your bedroom, sir. <gasps> what do you mean, only the three in my bedroom? Uh, the black one, sir, the tabby, and the small lemon-coloured animal. No, 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 look, I have not got a cat. I have never had a cat. I had a dog once called Melba. He used to sit so close to the fire. No, no, don't run away. No, no. It's all right, my dear. Now, no, no, stand back, sir. Stand back. I'm armed. <clears throat> I fancy, sir, that the animals might have become somewhat exhilarated as a result of discovering the fish in Mr. Worcester's bedroom. Fish in his bedroom? Fish? Be brave, Delia. My coat, sir. <clears throat> now, look, I'll prove it to you. I'll prove that there are no cats in my bedroom. Your hat, Sir Roderick. Yes, I didn't have a hat. This is the hat that was snatched from my head. He did it, Roderick. He stole your hat. 
that. Back slowly towards the door, Julia. <laughs> Don't make any sudden movement or do anything that might excite him. Now, look here. Uh, back, sir! Back, you devil! Back, I say! Back! 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 I'll see if I can recover our umbrella this time. I say, those weren't my cats I saw legging it down the stairs, were they? And what were they doing in my bedroom? Your man, what's his name, said it would be all right. Oh, he did, did he? I was just coming to collect them. Well, they've dashed well gone. Oh, well, can't be helped, I suppose. What was it for? It was that club, was it? The searchers? Or... Seekers, yes. Mm. I'll take the hat and the fish, anyway. I'm afraid the cats have eaten the fish. They wouldn't eat a hat, though. No, the chap you pinched it from was dining here tonight. He took it away with him. No cats, no fish, no hat. Well, sorry, but there you are. <clears throat> well, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I say, I hate to ask you, but you couldn't lend me a tenner, could you? A tenner? What for? Well, the fact is, I've got to pop round and bail Claude and Eustace out. They've been arrested. Arrested? They got a bit above themselves, I'm afraid. Tried to pinch a bus. And they expect me to provide ten pounds to bail them out? Well, they did rather, yes. You do realise that the people who are dining here tonight were my prospective in-laws? No, I didn't, actually. Congratulations. Well, because of you, they've now got away from here believing me to be a certifiable lunatic and determined that I shall never... marry their daughter. Oh, frightfully sorry. Tell me what. Why don't we make it 20 pounds? You can bait them out and buy them a drink before you pour them onto the train. I say, that, that's jolly decent. No, don't say a word. No. no, really. I insist. Thank you. This was all your doing, wasn't it, Jeeves? So? You worked the whole thing, didn't you? With the glossops. Well, <clears throat> if you'll pardon the liberty, sir, I doubt if the young lady would have been entirely suitable for you. And what a wheeze, you knowing all about the Glossop's horror of moggies. I must say, Jeeves, you are a bit of a marvel. Very good of you to say so, sir. Will that be all, sir? Uh, yes, thank you, Jeeves, yes. Breakfast at the usual hour, sir? Yes, thank you, Jeeves. Good night. Good night, sir.